a beautiful but cloudy day here in my suburb town. And I've got about 10 hours of playtesting in this new format. So let's talk about our first impressions, shall we? What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy that very rainy subscribe button off of that like and subscribe button? I don't know, I was trying to play it off the cuff, but ladies and gentlemen, welcome officially to the brand new format. I don't even know if it's September 2nd or September 3rd, whatever it is, I'm pretty sure today's the second, but I've got a bunch of playtesting under my belt now, and I've got roughly, like I said in the intro, about 10 hours, eight to 10, somewhere around that ballpark, and I have been playtesting like crazy, specifically with White Forest. What I've been playing doesn't really matter because whatever you decide to play isn't really gonna matter as long as you're making the right tech choices. So first off, of course, you've got your obvious players in the bunch. Drone Lot Bird and Shifter is being seen everywhere. As long as Shifter is legal and your deck can play it, people are going to play Shifter. You should really expect Shifter to be seen a lot more, especially if we don't get a ban list again in like December or maybe not even until January because we get crossover breakers in December. Of course, we get the Malice and Wonderland archetype based off of Alice in Wonderland. That can play Shifter. I call it Exosister 2.0, but it's actually better than Exosister. Um, so keep that in mind. Shifter is going to be a pain in everybody's side. Um, and the biggest boogeyman I've seen in the room, I haven't actually seen it come up yet, at least for me, but Nibiru is the bitch in the room, ladies and gentlemen, because... You have to keep in mind, with Lacrima Band and Beatrice Band, the only thing that the Fiendsmith engine can get you to uh, insulate you from Nib is Wave Hiking. And that's assuming that you open up Engraver to get the Wave Hiking set up by summon number five. If not, then you're kind of playing a dangerous game with doing it after summon number five, even though you're still getting to the Wave Hiking. It's just something to keep in mind, right? Ideally, you want to be opening up that Engraver. But... <sighs> Nibiru's just insane now, like honestly. Like I'm on White Forest and the biggest issue I have with White Forest right now when I'm not playing the Toy Box engine, even with the Runic engine, is like it plays right into Nib. Now the way that like I talked about in my Yu-Gi-Oh! in depth video on White Forest, shameless plug, you can kind of play around Nib by just adding the woes of the White Forest to your hand by summon number five off of the uh, Resselia or just by summon number five in general. And then even if you make the Dia Bell, if your end board is like just the Dia Bell, is the opponent really gonna nib you for one? Like, okay, cool, you're gonna send it back into the extra deck with either Resselia or Sylvie. But the point is, is that Nib is a lot more powerful now. I've seen replays of Snake Eye, I've played against Snake Eye, and the boards they make without a Wave Hiking up on the table are just garbage. <laughs> like, I was kind of messing around with, like, Deco Talker Heat Soul because it's a fire. So, like, you can get out Mascarena, link off into Heat Soul, draw a card, link off with the Heat Soul and another card into, like, Promethean Princess or something. Promethean gets back Heat Soul, and then on the opponent's turn, you can draw a card. But, like, what are you drawing into if it's not fucking hand traps? Like, honestly. And so, the end boards are just really trash without Apo. And it was crazy because I remember people talking about Apollosa needs to be banned. And I remember thinking at the time I was playing Tempi, but I was like, Apo's really not an issue. If the opponent's making a 1600 attack Apo and you're the Tempi player, you're just gonna activate one of your three at the time, Sangin Summoning, summon the Pydra, search, the Apo ain't gonna work. If you don't have Sangin Summoning, you're gonna summon it, attack over the Apo and activate Sangin Kaiman and win the ball game. Like it wasn't a big deal. But now that Apo's out of the equation, that really changes a lot. And it makes cards like Nibiru much better. That was actually something I thought about after seeing the balance. It was like, why have a card like Apo in the game and Nib exists when like it completely invalidates even having Nibiru as a card? Like you hear people all the time in combo videos, yeah, you summon this by summon number five to play through Nib. If you play out this combo, it plays through Nib. Like people are always making up plays to either play through or play around Nibiru. Like that's the biggest joke I have with, and, and how I piss off hero players all the time is that they talk about all these combos and I'm like, end of main Nib. And then they're like, oh, okay, well I can still do this, this and this and I can play through it. And I'm like, but you lost a lot of resources. I don't care about your board, whatever it is now. And a lot of decks are like that now. Pre-Rage of the Abyss. Once we get Rage of the Abyss, you, you're getting your cheeks clapped. Like, they're going to have Omni Negates out the yin yang because that as a Mina Sylvie thing that's an Omni Negate. It's like a Baron 2.0, let's be honest here. But right now, in like the five to six and a half weeks or so that we have before Rage of the Abyss... This format's honestly really good. Like, I'm sure some people are going to say, oh, they didn't hit Snake Eyes hard enough, but I really encourage all of you to sit down, watch Snake Eye combos, 
and watch what they play when there's not like a wave high king established like obviously if they have the wave high king you gotta open up like nib plus imperm but even then nib plus imperm is not hard to pull off because i would argue 100 percent of decks are playing imperm now even white force are playing imperm because it's a trap that you can pitch off of either the acela reset reselia whatever right so like opening up nib plus imperm pretty much clears any board in the game now like i can't think of a deck that can easily play that maybe drytron and voiceless voice can kind of do some stuff um and i've seen a lot of people picking up drytron i've played against drytron a little bit i'm like i've said on the channel before i'm no drytron expert even though someone got mad at me when i talked about the new trap card that i think was coming out in rage of the abyss or infinite Forbidden, whatever the new drytron trap was they got revealed a while back someone got mad in my comments and says what are you talking about the trap helps you play through shifter and i'm like but it's a trap so isn't it garbage i don't know but i've seen drytron the deck is cool I'm sure that they're still playing the Amorphage Factor thing, whatever that skips the main phase that's bonkers. Um, but it's so nice, so refreshing to see all of these new decks in the room that have either gotten cards like Eva back or like decks like Snake Eyes that have been hit, so they have to pivot to other things. Obviously, once we get Rage of the Abyss, a lot of that's going to change. But even then, I don't think that Snake Eyes is going to be that tier zero deck slash engine that we saw it being played in so many events. Now, with that being said, what, what do I think about Ubel from my testing? Ubel is nuts. Um, you gotta have a big brain to play that deck because like I've said before on the channel, I think Ubel is really fun. I've picked it up, I've played it, but it is so complicated. And I was talking with my buddy about it. Uh, shout out as always to Valley D. And he's like, dude, this, this deck's like tier element 2.0. Like once you start involving hand traps, that's when you have to start pivoting to different lines of play. Um, or as Robbie Cole says, the big little things that you need to do. Fucking word salad. Um, but the deck is incredible, especially if you can learn all of its lines. Does Droll still hurt the deck? Oh yeah. Does Shifter still hurt the deck? Oh yes. If your deck is able to play Droll, I highly recommend that you play it. I, I feel like the biggest hand traps that you should be playing this format is definitely just hand traps that hit hard, hit big, swing fast. You know, if you've got 15 non-engine slots of hand traps that you can play, Nib, Ash, Imperm, Droll, maybe Baylor, however many that is at that point. But your main ones are definitely gonna be like, I would say Nib, Droll, and Ash as like your main nine and Imperm if you're able to play 12. How many hand traps do I think you need to play this format? 15. I would love if we went to a format of 12. Although I feel like at that point, if you're playing 12 hand traps with three talents, it's kind of the same thing. But, yeah, I feel like, unfortunately, we're still kind of in a 15 hand trap format. Are we in, like, an 18-plus hand trap format? Not till Rage of the Abyss. <laughs> Once we get Mulch Army Foie Ross, yeah, I think decks are going to be playing, like, 18 to 20 hand traps. I don't think we're going to get to the 22 to, like, 26 hand trap count, even if you're a Tempai player, like we see in the uh, OCG, since they have Rage of the Abyss and all that. But we're going to definitely see hand traps increase big time. And that's my biggest fear once we get through this little interim session pre-Rage of the Abyss, is that the biggest issue with last format, where Snake Eye was tier zero, we had given Puppet FTK, was that you had these hand trap wars in like Snake Eye mirror matches, where it was literally just, how many hand traps did you open? Because if I open up more than you and I see engine first, I win. And the Fiendsmith engine just helped you play through that. The Azamina engine in a similar sense, even though the deck will still die to Shifter, because most decks do nowadays, but if you're not seeing that and you're seeing like Ash plus Imperm, that's not gonna be enough to stop Snake Eyes as Amina. So the biggest thing I can recommend for people is that if you wanna play Snake Eyes as Amina, you better be picking up your Snake Eye cards like five minutes ago because the engine is honestly pretty cheap. The deck is no longer a thousand dollars, thank God. But if you're expecting the format to stay the way it is now, once we get Rage of the Abyss in about six weeks, sorry to burst your bubble sugar boo bear, but that ain't gonna be happening. So prepare your wallets, prepare your holes, and uh, we're all gonna have a very Merry Christmas. But at the end of the day, I think this format's great. I love this format. It is so enjoyable, even if I'm getting my cheeks clapped trying to play White Forest Runic and having Chimera drop out of Diabels. <laughs> That's just an auto lose, but hopefully Chimera is gonna be like tier two. So if you're like 4-0 at a regional, you ain't gonna see that baby back ghoul shit. Guys, let me just think about all of this down in the comments below. What are you playing for this format? Let, let me know all that more, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.